My name is Sophie. I suffered from fibromyalgia and extreme fatigue syndrome for about 24 years. Today I'm fully healthy. And now I would like to pass on everything I've learned about health and healing and more to support those who are still on a journey. And this is why I create this documentary series and podcast, The Puzzle of Healing. Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of The Puzzle of Healing. This is episode two in our series about diet and digestion. I talked to Helen Kimber, she is a nutritionist and a yoga teacher. We introduce you to vitamins and minerals today. We're gonna give you a little overview of like what they are, how they work, why we need them and where we can get them from. If you have any questions, please let us know. It is a complex topic, so if you want to know anything, write it in the comments, reach out to us directly and we'll do our best to get back to you. Little reminder, in this first half of this series, we're going to just introduce you to various topics in a healthy condition. So as if your body is completely fine, your digestion works the way it's supposed to, your absorption works the way it's supposed to. And later on, we're going to talk about dysfunctions. Later on, we're going to talk about various chronic illnesses. But even though at the moment we're just introducing those topics, maybe there is something in it for you. I learned a lot and I thought I already know quite a bit about it. So I hope you enjoy this episode and I hope you can take something from it. Hi Helen, welcome to our second episode. Thanks for joining me again. <laughs> Oh, thank you. It's really lo lovely to see you and catch up with you again. Yeah, how are you doing? Ages. Yes, it's been ages. It's so true. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing really well, thank you. How about you? Likewise, I'm really good. I'm really enjoying the autumn. Like, it's so beautiful. I have this beautiful tree here, which is like half green, half red, and it's just amazing. Oh yeah, the colours are fantastic, aren't they? And and sometimes when we get this weekend just gone, we had some really fabulous weather. So mm. you can still go out and enjoy the fresh air and um, get walking and running or do whatever you want to do out in the in the fresh air. It's really lovely. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. Cool. So today's episode, we said we're going to do an introduction of vitamins and minerals, whatever our body needs. <laughs> and again, yeah, just a reminder. So this is like we talk about it as if you have a full on healthy body. So this is still within our we just introduce how things should be going part of this little series. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So vitamins and minerals, it's a huge topic. And obviously in the half an hour or so that we've got today, I'm just going to really skim the surface, but that's what this is all about. So that then if people do feel they need to reach out, they, they can do and have a more in-depth uh, discussion and conversation. But vitamins and minerals, and, and we've had numerous discussions about them oh, all yeah. the time, <laughs> Sophie, they're all part of um, a really, really healthy diet and they're required and we term vitamins and minerals as either micronutrients or essential nutrients. And when we look at the term micronutrients as opposed to macronutrients, so you've got your macros, which are your proteins, your fats and your carbohydrates that your body needs in larger amounts. And the vitamins and minerals, we class those as micronutrients, which you really need them in micro amounts. Oh. However, when they are missing, they can have massive impact on health and well-being. Because when you look at the science behind them, and if you think again, I always look at the, the human body as an amazing machine mm -hmm. and the fuel called food that we put into it um, helps to keep this machine going. The micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals are the, are the little tiny sparks, if you like, that keep this fire, uh, this amazing fuel um, going. So they, the, although they aren't fundamental for energy, they are absolute or, or muscle building. So proteins are for muscle building, carbohydrates for energy. If we don't have vitamins and minerals, the proteins can't do the job that they're built for. The carbohydrates can't do the job they're built for. 
Oh, um, no, I immediately have my first question. <laughs> so, so you say yeah. the micronutrients are not for energy building, but why are we so tired if we have a lack of iron? Because I always need more iron than it okay. makes any sense. So, so iron is one of the, the, the minerals that we need in order to make hemoglobin, which, is, which carries oxygen around the body. So iron is just a small part of the hemoglobin molecule at the, that then, which, is, which makes up blood, mm -hmm. and, and that molecule captures oxygen and then it transports oxygen around the body. And that's why you get fatigued because you've got low iron, so you can't carry as much oxygen around the body. And you oh, might that's even get so a bit fascinating. I had no idea about that. That's so cool. Right. Yeah. And it's and again, it's it's trying to sort of peel away the layers and looking at what what we need, but not only what you need, but why you need it. Mm -hmm. And so I look at all the vitamins and minerals and we tend to if we look at set chemistry and biochemistry. And again, the body, the human body is just a big biochemical machine mm -hmm. and the vitamins and minerals work in that machine as if we we call them enzymes so in order for a process to go from a to z you need to go through the whole alphabet and the vitamins and minerals enable you to jump from one letter to the up to, to the next along those processes and so if you are lacking in key vitamins and minerals some of the processes fail Mm. or don't work optimally. So for example, carbohydrate metabolism needs a lot of the B vitamins. Mm. So if you eat a lot of carbohydrates, in order to optimize those carbohydrates being utilized by the body, you need to have the B vitamins to, to enable the carbohydrates to be broken down along all the different processes. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about carbohydrates, I, I learned that they're like kind of good and not so good carbohydrates. So like anything that is like whole grain is the better ones, like brown rice instead of white, stay away from white bread, um, have yeah. whole meal things. How, how true reason, is that? So the reason that carbohydrates are classed as good or bad, and I don't, I don't really sit with this, but and as a nutritionist, mm -hmm. we will be speaking, I'm sure, about macronutrients and carbohydrates on one of the sessions. So I don't want to go off tangent and speak okay. about them <laughs> too much now. But the reason why we are encouraged to, to eat more whole grain, brown rice, wholemeal bread, is because the grains contain quite a lot of the B vitamins. Okay. And also, they they are also contain fiber, which we were discussing before the recording. Mm -hmm. How important fiber is for for your gut health um, and things like that. So so there's, there's, that's the reason why. Um, but carbohydrates tend to, I think, form too much. We put too much emphasis on carbohydrates in our diets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where would you rather put the emphasis? <laughs> I would put the emphasis absolutely on vitamins and minerals and perhaps proteins and good fats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you can still get really good amounts of carbohydrates from fruit and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And they and are this, richer in vitamins and minerals, I assume. Yeah, you, you get okay. more you get more nutrients for your money, if you like. <laughs> so, so, for example, a banana, which is full of carbohydrates um, has also got potassium in it which is really good for it's one of what we call an electrolyte which mm -hmm. helps with um, again all your blood levels of, of electrolytes are essential to help with your heartbeat mm -hmm. and the electrical because we are electrical as well so the electrical beating of your heart is is it's absolutely essential that we have vitamins and minerals and an essential nutrients Mm -hmm. so what is it all we need what what are the vitamins what are the minerals and okay. can we find an easy to remember way because it feels like i heard these things so many times and there are certain things i keep to have look to look up over and over what they are and where to get them and from. again it's <laughs> it's one of those things you'll never 
you'll never remember everything and I don't remember everything I've even got some notes now to think oh I need to remember this I need to say that to Sophie I have to have a look at things at what we read I'm thinking oh where have I put that piece of paper that I need so I I always say to keep it really simple to start really really simply if you want to make sure that you have loads and loads of vitamins and minerals in your natural diet, this is before we take supplements, and I'll talk about supplements presently, but, and supplements are just supplements. They are to supplement a healthy diet, not to replace an unhealthy diet. Yeah. So, and, and that and that's how, how I look at supplements. So, if you eat a rainbow, you will get an alphabet. So, <laughs> and that's the way I remind, remember it. So a rainbow is brightly colored. So if you look at your plate and whatever meals you eat, you've got lots of different colors, reds, oranges, purples, blues, greens, and you can get blue food. It's in blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> Oranges, do you know what I mean? So, so yeah. think about all those different colours of the rainbow, mm-hmm. and by eating a rainbow, you will get an alphabet. So, the vitamins and minerals you can, you know, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, and then you've got, I call it the periodic table. Mm-hmm. If you go back to chemistry lessons and science, you have all the different minerals in all the different fruits and vegetables that you that you eat and for me and i sort of when i talk to my clients when i do nutrition seminars that's how i look at it and then i also say um avoid at all costs if you can beige food oh interesting what about well do you count potatoes as beige because the they're skin pretty, looks beige, but the yeah, yellow inside beige. is yellow. Yeah, they're still pretty beige. So okay. they're full of carbohydrates, and um, research suggests that um, the, the skin of the potato, yes, it's good in fibre, and it does provide a certain amount of vitamin C, and that's because in this country we eat so many potatoes that mm-hmm. vitamin C that, that we get quite a lot of vitamin C from potatoes, but they're pretty beige. And so if you think beige is great for interior design, it's all neutral. Mm-hmm. It's very bland. <laughs> and there's nothing there, is there? But it looks great on a wall, but it doesn't look <laughs> so good on a plate. So, and I know cauliflower, cauliflower is, is white and a bit boring, but cauliflower is a cruciferous vegetable that mm. contains certain nutrients uh, that, that are really brilliant for help with, uh, with liver detoxification. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, maybe that's something we can talk about on another, another podcast. Yeah. But yeah, if you start thinking about beige foods like crisps and, and bread and mm-hmm. quite a lot of carbohydrates, um, and and I'm going to use the word term junk food and quick food. Yeah. It's all pretty beige. What about nuts? Because nuts are usually pretty oh, good, right? But I some are nuts. brown and, and some are. And they, they are they are on the on the other side of the spectrum. They are beige, but they're a good beige. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. It's good to remember that and there is good for example, beige food. Brazil nuts are an excellent source of selenium. I read that yesterday and I actually ordered yeah. Brazil nuts last night because I want and to have more selenium need, in my food. You only need a couple of Brazil nuts a day. Um, they are, and, and nuts have been vilified by um, sort of slimming organizations going, oh, they're really fattening and avoid them. And what, but they're, they're a brilliant source of protein. The fats in them are natural. So the mm. body will utilize them correctly. And like, for example, Brazil nuts has have a really good supply of selenium. Seeds as well, like things like linseeds are a, a goldy color, but they are a fabulous source of omega-3, which is an essential mm. oil. Um, sesame seeds, um, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, all the different seeds they contain lots of um, lots of different little min- micronutrients, and again, I can't remember them all here. I'd have to look them up. 
but but they contain a lot of micronutrients so you can think toast them sprinkle them onto a salad um, sprinkle them into onto your cereal in the morning um, or, or you don't even have to have cereal in the morning you can eat cereal whenever <laughs> muesli I make my own muesli and I put nuts and seeds in in that muesli um, recipe and yeah they're, they're really really good source of, of micronutrients and um, essential fats if you if you have your seeds and what about oats oats Although they are a carbohydrate, they are also a good source of protein. They're also a good source of soluble fiber, which if people have um, IBS type symptoms, very often the fiber that we are encouraged to eat with IBS Mm -hmm. can be quite scratchy. So like your bran fiber can be quite scratchy in, in an inflamed intestine. And so very often you need more soluble fiber. So Mm -hmm. oats for certain, for individuals who can tolerate that them, they are good for absorbing water, which is great for the large intestine, but also as well, they provide um, what we call, they provide food for the beneficial bacteria. So Mm -hmm. they are a prebiotic as well. We're going off at all sorts of tangents here, aren't we? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I had to check all the exceptions of the beige food, so it's the food I can think of. Well, exactly. And it's really good to have a discussion like this. But you wouldn't just eat oats. Again, very often people will make porridge oats. But I will encourage them and say, yeah, but add some berries. Add some berries to those porridge Mm -hmm. oats raspberries strawberries blueberries blackberries so you're getting a little bit of a rainbow on the side of that beige Mm -hmm. plate yeah i always put um i always have them with oat milk i put a little bit of 100 percent cacao inside it cacao powder and i put seeds on them so that's pretty often my breakfast and argave syrup for like a little bit sweetening so yeah, that's, and again, that's a breakfast that's, I have. Things like that are great. Honey, if people pr- want to use honey, mm. very often I get clients saying, oh, am I allowed honey? Or even, I mean, am I allowed syrup, golden yeah. syrup? And I'll, if you like it, <laughs> and you don't need that much, you're not going to put like loads and loads of tablespoons of golden syrup. You need a teaspoon. And if that encourages someone to eat a bowl of porridge oats, with some berries and a teaspoon of honey or syrup, that's better than them having some crunchy nut cornflakes. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess when, when you say the cornflakes, I mean the processed foods, the problem there yes. is all the sugars yes. and the salt, we do not know how Absolutely. much is in there. Yes. So I guess that yes. one teaspoon of sweet things Absolutely. we add is better yes. than all the processed food stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, most definitely, yes. So, so that's, that's sort of the mineral, well, that's a, a quick a quick journey through and and so how how do i know how much do i have to eat of rainbow a day um, to make sure i have everything is there a rule of thumb something like there that? is a rule of thumb and again it's changing all the time very often we we're, we're encouraged by sort of the government in this country to eat five five portions of fruit and or vegetables a day and that gives you your fiber um, and and your vitamins and minerals which is great then very often you've got to be careful if you are insulin resistant or you or verging on diabetes the amount of fruit that you eat and high highly sugary vegetables and vegetables that are really sort of sweet so carrots Mm -hmm. and parsnips are quite and beetroot um is quite sweet but then that's that's a sort of different aspect i would say for for generally general health and well-being as men as much as you can is is really beneficial but Mm -hmm. try not to sort of have loads and loads of, of fruit on its own because at the end of the day it is sugar Mm-hmm. So if you eat lots of fruit, it, it will get converted by the body into glucose. So it doesn't matter whether you eat a slice of bread, a piece of banana or a piece of apple. Um, berries are less sugary, but I'm, I'm just talking about or, or some carrot, so, some of the sugary sort of sweeter vegetables, the higher carbohydrate vegetables, the body And again, this is where it's such an amazing machine. The body can only use glucose. The brain uses about 500 calories a day of glucose. 
-hmm. And so whatever you eat, be it a Mars bar, crisps, an apple or a banana, when it goes into that amazing machine, things start happening to convert the carbohydrate into glucose. And that's where you have to be mindful of not having loads of sugar because you just get lots of spikes in your blood sugar. And we can, again, we can discuss that at another time. Yeah. <laughs> Our series keeps growing with more topics. <laughs> it's amazing. So, I mean, obviously there are loads of different forms of diets. So what am I doing? Because I know I, as a, I don't, I'm now since this year eating a lot of fish and since last year reintroduced eggs after having been fully vegan for six years. And I realized also thanks to you that this is not the ideal diet for me. So how do I know what diet to follow? What if I, to save my life, don't want to eat non-vegan? Can I get everything? How do I know what's right for me so that Again, I have all it, the vitamins? It's, it's very, very individual, isn't it, Sophie? Yeah. And so veganism for some individuals is absolutely fine. Vegetarianism is for some. And for some people, they, they, they try it and they become quite ill. Mm -hmm. So I think what you have to do is really listen to your body. Yeah. And as long as you have the best food and you really listen to your body and you make sure that you have lots of fresh, natural foods, I think that's so much better. And I'm, I'm going to, you know, maybe be a little bit politically incorrect here for people who might be strict vegans. But I've worked with strict vegans who have been quite ill and unwell mm -hmm. because all they have done is converted their meat eating life to having veggie sausages and veggie burgers and mm -hmm. all the, I'm going to say, convenience vegetarian yeah. style foods and actually although i'm a strict vegetarian and i would not eat meat if that's what you're going to do you'd be better off eating a fillet steak than yeah. eating loads of veggie meals which are just fast food it's I convenient guess, it's convenience yeah. without the meat in it Exactly. And then it's, I guess it's the same way as if you eat meat, fast food stuff, it's probably yeah, just exactly. as bad as, as yeah. vegan fast yeah. food stuff. Yeah. So in yeah. the end, it just comes down to like not processed, good food source and yes. rainbow. And, and the mistake I made, I hadn't eaten enough a variety of lentils and beans. That's one thing I also had to learn that, um, yeah, as especially as a vegan, you can't just eat lentils. You need a variety of beans Lots as well because there's different proteins in it. Absolutely. And the protein mix, the, well, it's the yeah. amino acid mix. And again, it's it's very, sort of looking at your vitamins and minerals. If, you, if you're stressed and you put stress on your body by not eating enough food, not mm. sleeping enough, the stress response can absolutely even doing too much exercise mm -hmm. it's, it's both physical and psychological stress the stress response can wipe out a heck of a lot of your vitamins and minerals um okay. and the stress it's very draining on some key micronutrients so things like your b vitamins mm -hmm. vitamin c calcium magnesium zinc and in in a way if you start looking when people have been really stressed very often they come down with lots of infections mm -hmm. you know they get a cold and they get infections and things and that's because the stress response the, the hormone cortisol steals all the nutrients mm. that it needs in order to keep it high which is the, the elevated stress response because if you look at the machine and take all the emotion away from us as human beings look at that machine the body's cortisol the only one thing it wants it to do is is to survive okay. so it will do anything to maintain survival and that includes stealing all the nutrients mm -hmm. from from where else the body needs and so those micronutrients, the B vitamins, um, vitamin C, and calcium, magnesium and zinc are very, very often depleted. Mm -hmm. Magnesium is a very underrated micronutrient as well. 
Yeah. Is that why it's recommended to have magnesium after exercises or sports? Very often, mag very often people say about calcium, don't they? Calcium and magnesium, yeah. you know, for strong bones and teeth, and everybody goes on about calcium, but magnesium as as well is is required for things like the 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 the, the, the blood levels, so the electrical impulses of the, of the heartbeat, uh, muscle contraction is mm -hmm. it's essential, and so very often if people get cramp after exercise if they do a lot of exercise or if they get what we call restless legs mm -hmm. magnesium is 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 often go. being used a lot more so they need more yeah. um women who are going through the perimenopause or the menopause find that very often they they get restless legs find a magnesium supplements brilliant mm -hmm. and it's also really calming um for, for for to help with sleep and calmness and so very often magnesium um taken at night with other sort of calming herbs like hops um and um an amino acid uh, threonine that can help in in sort of neurotransmitter sort of oh. relaxation of, of the brain that's so, so yeah. fascinating so now before because you touched on supplements now before we do that how do i know so no two questions number one I, I had years ago, I had a lack of vitamin D3. So I was told in a short amount of time to take a lot of vitamin D3 to basically fill the gap to get back to, I need the microdosing. Would okay. you say that is correct? If I have a lack of something, I temporarily need a lot to compensate for the lack or how would you go about it if somebody really would, lacks something? If somebody was really, really low, I'd say you've got to be quite careful to flood the body because mm, one, the body can only utilize and, and metabolize so much. You have to be quite careful with some of what we call the fat soluble vitamins which is vitamin a and vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k because they are stored in the body mm -hmm. they're stored um, in the liver mainly and you can get too much mm -hmm. and that can end up with, with toxicity and things like that so i would i would never personally suggest flooding the body okay. i would say you know just take some some really you have a really good diet and then add in um the, the nutrients it depends if you have a malabsorption issue which you may well have then you'd have to look at at the sort of um tests and things like that and that's mm. a little bit different but generally if somebody says oh i think i'm low in vitamin d I don't think it's a good idea to flood the body, particularly mm -hmm. with fat soluble vitamins. In this country, we seem to be quite low in vitamin D because yeah. vitamin D is also manufactured um, in, through the skin via the sunlight. Yeah. So you need to expose uh, your body to UV light. And I think over recent years, everybody's become, you know, let's slap on factor 50. <laughs> um, because, and so, because, you know, you don't want to get skin cancer, but we've become so frightened that we maybe become depleted. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's sort of the happy medium, isn't it? You need to, yeah. to sort of establish, you know, let's go out in, in the sun, but don't let's fry out in for hours <laughs> on end. Not that you're going to in the UK in, in October. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. <laughs> Okay, so when do I know then that I do need supplements? How many should I take? When should I take them? What's what's the magic about them? <laughs> okay, so I I would say generally, under sort of general circumstances, um, to to maintain optimal health and well being, I would say a really good multivitamin and mineral is is really important just okay. a one a one a day well absorbed multivitamin and mineral along with things like digestive enzymes and probiotics if, if you need them but i don't really class those as supplements and mm -hmm. um, those are digestive support um okay. enzymes and, and, and products um but your vitamins and minerals i would say a, a one a day if you you know for health and well-being and potentially an essential fatty acid so mm -hmm. either an omega-3 fish oil or um, or a vegan equivalent sort of flax oil or something like that mm -hmm. um, and then potentially 
perhaps a B complex and a vitamin C. Now you can take high doses of vitamin C because it's, and the B vitamins, they're easily destroyed. And the reason why I'm suggesting that is because very often the food that we eat has been sat in the supermarket shelves and then we cook it. And those dis easily destroyed vitamins, particularly like vitamin C, that orange that in laboratory terms contains you know a thousand milligrams of vitamin c maybe when you picked it from the tree it did but ha having been picked from a tree transported across the ocean sat in a warehouse and then in a supermarket and you pick it up put it in your fruit bowl and three days later eat it there's potentially not that much vitamin c in it Okay. as there was at the beginning and so taking a vitamin c supplement is is really good for your mm -hmm. for your immune system so is then frozen if we, sorry for interrupting is frozen better than frozen vegetables and fruits sometimes yes because very often they've been frozen at source mm -hmm. and so you're not going to get the issues with the depletion and the bru bruising can, can harm vitamin C. So frozen at source is, is and again, it's quite convenient. And so you don't lose lose those those vitamins as much, which is which again, for convenience, it's really great. Um, but yeah, I, I think for general health and well-being, taking those that I've suggested is a good idea. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, you might get people who do a lot of exercise or people who are stressed, or people who maybe, again, it's stress, work really long hours, or people who have yo-yo dieted, all the different stress aspects, yeah. or lots of exercise. And then on top of your general multivitamin, mineral, B, B vitamins, etc., potentially it would be a good idea to maybe take other things. So mm -hmm. magnesium glycinate, is a really good one. It's brilliant to help with the liver to detoxify. So again, women who are going through the perimenopause very often find magnesium supplements really helpful because it can support their liver with all these this this estrogen that's that's you know going crazy in our bodies. <laughs> um, and then we've got these antioxidant nutrients. So we've got. Um, they're not just vitamins and minerals, they're things like glutathione and vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, selenium. Again, those are called antioxidants. And what they do is they, they can mop up items called, items called free radicals. And free radicals are, ju they're just, they just happen, breathing causes free radicals okay. and free radicals are harmful to us so they can cause degenerative disease they can cause cancers that all sorts of aging disease mm -hmm. and inflammation and so if you are inflamed uh, or if you have degenerative disease or what have you it's a good idea to take on more antioxidants in order to sort of sort of mop up these free radicals. But I would suggest if any of that is sort of works for you, if that if you're looking and that thinking, oh that that's me, I need that, I wouldn't just start taking any old vitamins and minerals. I would definitely speak to speak to a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would kind of come to to my next question. Um, if it feels right, is it right? So for me, like as I said to you also before we talked it feels like I'm taking way too much iron all the time, but I have like specifically, especially right now, I have my ovulation. And in that phase, I always, pretty much once a day at the moment, I have it that I suddenly feel depressed and I know I am not depressed, I need vitamins. And most of the time, if I then either consume some protein or take an iron pill, I'm fine, 20 minutes later. Right. For me, that's always a test. In my case, if I 20 minutes later feel better <laughs> or good again, <laughs> it was the case. If it yes. isn't, then maybe something else is up. But yes. is that then right? Because it feels right or I is think, that not I a good rule of thumb? For certain individuals, and we've had numerous in-depth discussions yeah. about this health, <laughs> haven't we? I think for certain individuals, you are one of them. 
you're you're very intuitive Mm -hmm. and you really feel and you really know and I think that's absolutely fine but again for other people it might not necessarily be the case and I I would say err on the side of caution Mm-hmm. Um, and, and 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 invest in speaking with someone who can really investigate your well-being with you mm-hmm. and give you advice on the best possible action for you to take. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Does that set, does that, that make sounds, sense? I think that sounds good. Okay. I think it is such a huge topic. Um, can we easily summarize it all before? Is there anything else you want to add to this episode, or do you think that is a comprehensive introduction? Um possibly I, I can't think of of anything else it's been you know a whirlwind hasn't it of talking about and vitamins and minerals they are it's vast the things that they do is phenomenal in in the human body but hopefully we've sort of touched on lots of little yeah. different topics and, and areas um and and looked at sort of how how important they are and where you can get them from and without sort of naming individual key foods well, I mean we've named some but without sort of going through each you know item of food which contains this and that <laughs> contains vitamin D or what have you um but I think maybe covering covering that and maybe people will ask some questions later yeah, on and be nice and get back to them how about I try summing it up if I got it then there's a good chance and you correct me if I got yeah, something wrong absolutely. Okay. so what I got from this session is so we need the macronutrients like the big things which are proteins and carbohydrates which we're going to talk about in more detail in another day yes. and we need the vitamins and the minerals and there supporting the micronutrients to do their job is that correct without the little ones the process from the big ones will fail absolutely without without the small ones in a way i always look at it as think of think of um, a car and when you put oil in your engine that's the fat Mm -hmm. water for your windscreen wipers is could be your carbohydrates mm-hmm. and your petrol is oh let's say petrol is carbohydrates because mm-hmm. that's the energy petrol's carbohydrates oil is your fat and your windscreen wiper wash is your um is your your water for your for your windscreen wipers that's that's your um protein so you've got fats proteins carbohydrates your Put the key in the ignition and i know we have keyless cars now <laughs> but just bear with me on this that is the spark that enables everything else to work that's your vitamins and minerals amazing and to get those you have to eat no matter what diet you're on a rainbow as much as you can yeah. but stay away from beige food except with some exceptions we discussed yes. <laughs> and then have um, certain amount of supplements to add to your already healthy diet, which was multivitamins, B complex, vitamin C, and have I forgotten anything you recommended? Potentially an omega three fatty Potentially acid. Potentially omega three. Yeah. All right. Just general health and well being. <laughs> and if anything feels odd or off, talk to your nutritionist to get a clearer picture on your individual situation because we talked about a scenario in which everything is working fine and you don't have any issues. Yes, yeah. Cool. Amazing. Then thank you so much for the second episode. Um, Do we have a little topic for the third one already? What did we say we're going to talk about next? Shall we talk about carbohydrates? Sounds good. Because we've done micronutrients, so we could then start looking at macronutrients, so carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. We might even be able to do them all three in one in in one episode. Should we just play it by ear and see how we go? Sounds good. (laughs) But most likely, if you watch this, that's most likely going to be our next topic. Okay. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much for today. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching the episode. That was episode two in our series about diet and digestion with Helen Kimber. I hope you learned something. I surely learned stuff along the way, which I didn't know about yet. And as you heard, we're most likely gonna talk about macronutrients, but most likely who knows what else we come up with in our preparation until then. If you wanna get in touch with Helen, there are as always links in the descriptions. Have a look and see you next time.